Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan. And with a lot of people introduced to Souls games via Elden Ring, I'm going to assume a lot of you decided to go check out FromSoft's other games and found out very quickly that they are extremely different beasts. So this is the first in a short video series on how to have the strongest possible start in a handful of classic FromSoft games, tailored towards beginners and focusing on builds that are not only absurdly strong, but easy to play for a great first run through these games. The first one we're going to look at is Demon's Souls, yep, the one that started it all. Except, you know, maybe Kingsfield, but we're not talking about that. So if you've just got Demon's Souls and want to kick its ass, this is the guide for you. Here's how to become OP in Demon's Souls in around an hour. So the first thing you need to know about Demon's Souls is of all the starting classes, one reigns supreme over the other's royalty. No, not because of some oligarchical bias based around generational inbreeding, probably. No, for, for other reasons. First thing you need to know is magic in Demon's Souls is absurdly nuts. If you've played Elden Ring and were way into how cray cray the magic was there, you're going to love Demon's Souls. Royalty is one of the two starting mage classes, but is by far the best for the following reasons. First, they start at soul level one with great stats, meaning less wasted points. Second, they start with both a cool hat and a cool magic stick, both of which increases your maximum MP. Third, they start with Soul Arrow, which throws a fast casting blue ball at enemies, which now that I said that, realize it's basically our lord and savior Dingleberry's Glintstone Pebble from Elden Ring, or the other way around, because this game was first. Fourth, and probably the best thing, they start with a ring that actually regens MP and at a decent rate. Yeah, coming from Elden Ring, this was straight awesome and makes the early game much easier, especially since Soul Arrow takes very little MP. So yeah, for your starting class, pick royalty. Your starting gift doesn't matter. I picked the ring that increases item find. Lastly, it's also worth pointing out that you might want to consider body type A, the female-esque body type, because for whatever reason, the best light armor in the game is limited only to that body type. I know, I know, blatant sexism in my video games of the absolute horror. I still picked type B though, because I wanted to cosplay as Teferi from Magic the Gathering, and then I spelled his name wrong. Let's not dwell on that, let's just, just, just move on. Okay, so in Demon's Souls, you'll first run through a tutorial area with a boss that will probably kill you, and then you're tossed into the Nexus and to World 1-1. The thing is, you can't actually level up until after beating world 1-1, one, one, so you don't need to worry too much about losing your souls here. They also don't give you very many, so don't sweat it. That being said, there is one thing you should consider getting with these souls, the spell Flame Toss. Flame Toss is a spell taught by a guy hiding out behind the far pillar on the right side of Ned Nexus, facing the middle. It does more damage than Soul Arrow, but is much less mana efficient. But its most important asset is that it does fire damage, which you will need because there are enemies that are resistant to magic damage. It costs a thousand souls, though if you do get it early, I actually don't suggest using it in Area 1-1 one, one, instead of Soul arrow because it's so mana hungry, though I would switch to it for the boss as the boss is weak to it. Now something you've probably noticed is when you die and come back as a spooky ghost, which is also known as soul form, as part of that bum Dio Miyazaki himself personally steals a massive chunk of your maximum HP. Point being, you can find a ring in the early game that increases your HP when in soul form called the Kling Ring. It's almost impossible to miss, but just in case, it's found here between these portcullises on the shortcut. This really helps mitigate some of that early game hit point pain. The second ring you're going to want to get is also in 1-1 one, one, and is the Thief Ring, which is done by doing a minor side quest. About halfway through the level, you'll encounter a knight being harassed by a mob of Black Friday shoppers. Murder them with extreme prejudice and then talk to the knight and he'll pop on down from his ledge. After that, if you backtrack to above where his ledge was and hop over, there will be an item there which is the Thief Ring. The thief Ring makes it so that enemies aggro you from much farther away and also lose aggro faster, making it good for both being sneaky and running away. I don't use it all the time, but it is nice to have. Alright, so now you're just gonna have to play through the rest of 1-1, one, one, killing the boss by tossing firebombs and fireballs at its stupid face, and eventually it'll unlock the game's mandatory waifu, and then can level up. So let's quickly talk about how points work for this build. This is a very simple build, great for beginners, because you are basically 100% magic, and we're going to get a weapon that scales off only magic, so all the rest of the points are pretty much bunk. There is, however, a few things worth mentioning. First thing is, you're definitely going to want health, which is vitality. This gives okay points until about 18, where it then gives a ton until about 30, and falls off between 31 and 45. You're going to be mostly ranged, you probably don't need a ton of vite, so I just shoot for 20 early and 30 as kind of a final ending. Second is Int, which is different than some other Souls games, as it not only gives MP, but also increases the number of spells you can slot. You get one slot at Int 10, two slots at 14, three slots at 18, four slots at 24, five slots at 30, and six, the maximum number of slots at 40, so there's no reason to ever, ever go past 40. For beginning game, three slots is more than enough, so Int 18 is what you should be shooting for, but don't prioritize magic too much for this. Speaking of magic, this is absolutely our most important stat. It's damage for everything we have. Magic soft cap changes based on the weapon, but for early try to 
hit between 20 and 30, and that should be good enough. All right, you got it. At this point, you shut up some levels and flame toss. So let's go into a later area and get our kick-ass weapon. You're going to head up into 4-1, Island's Edge. And this is technically a end of the beginning game area, which means it's going to murder the pants off you. So I'm gonna give you some basic strats on what we're trying to do early on. First of all, I recommend putting your wand in the right hand and shield in the left. Second, this area is full of blue-eyed roly-poly zombies. And you really, really need to make sure you only aggro one of these at a time or else you are going to die. The strat to killing them is just spamming your fire spell, which they are weak to while running or rolling backwards like you're playing a mage in Elder Scrolls Oblivion. There is one right off the bat and then one through the gateway. As you go up the hill, an archer one will shoot at you as well as another melee one. Luckily, the arrows in this game are extremely slow, so just dodge the arrows, killing the melee one first and then go kill the archer. After that, you need to stop and then go extremely slowly up the hill as there are two melee ones up there, but you only want to aggro one of them. Once one of them starts moving towards you, run away and as he follows, you kill him and then go kill the other one and you should be in the clear for the hill. As you approach the archer at the top, there are two archer ones above, so be careful and then head left. There's a pressure plate trap on the floor, so if you press it, hug the right wall to avoid the arrows. Now, when you're in the far room, the weapon you want is going to be directly on your left, being guarded by a super red-eye zombie who will 100% one-shot you at this point in the game. This guy is guarding the weapon that we want, the Crescent Falcon. You have a couple options here. You can try and kill him, or you can just run past him to grab the sword. Either way, be one that if you do choose to fight him, those archers on the archway will shoot you, so you may need to go up there and take care of them first, and then go down and try and fight the zombie. Either way, this is probably going to take several tries, but something you've probably noticed is that these guys drop a ton of souls for this point in the game. So if you say kill all of them on the hill and have low health or mana, just head back to the nexus and use those points to level up until you're strong enough to eventually go get the falchion. Now the falchion is not only plus one, but it's crescent, which means it scales 100% with the magic, which is going to make this our primary melee weapon for basically the first half of the game and maybe beyond. It absolutely stomps most enemies early and you got right off the bat. Nice. Keep in mind you can't upgrade it until you find materials that are in 4-2, so don't worry about it for now, just use it as is. So at this point, we're pretty well kitted, I'm ready to stomp most of the game, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this area 4-1 with all the roly-poly zombies is, as I said, an absolutely fantastic farming spot, especially as a mage. If you kill every enemy on the hill, archway, and then the red-eye zombie, you can end up with around two to 3,000 souls per run, which early on can net you a bunch of early levels. If you do choose to farm, just remember not to go past 18 int, as you're probably not going to need it at this point, and don't neglect vitality as your bot is well armored as a piece of paper. After farming this, you're going to need to head to world 2-1 to get the final piece of our kit, the Chris Blade. This is also generally the next area I suggest going to plot-wise anyway. Now, I'm not going to give a full walkthrough of 2-1 because it is pretty long, but needless to say that eventually when you get to the end, you'll find a massive elevator that when you go down it, there will be a fog door where the boss is. However, before you fight the boss, you need to go back up the elevator and then climb the wooden scaffolding that's circling it because up on top, you will acquire the Chris Blade. And you're probably saying, Nathan, you fool, I already have the Crescent Falchion and it kicks all sort of demon butt, why would I need another weapon that is objectively worse? Well, that's the fair question, I guess. But the answer is we're not ever going to be attacking with this weapon. Instead, we're going to be using it to buff our wand. See, the Chris Blade has a special ability. It decreases your magic defense by about 20%, but also increases your magic output by 20%, which is completely absurd. So if you hold it in your right hand with the wand in your left, you're going to be casting small nukes every time you fire, which is just awesome. So once you get that Chris Blade, you're basically set, and I would suggest kidding out as follows. In your right hand, put the Falchion and the Chris Blade. Use the Falchion in close quarters and against weak enemies, and of course, the Chris Blade's just there to pump your wand. In your left hand, put your Catalyst and some sort of shield. I just stuck with the Buckler because I have the stats for it. Even if it isn't 100% physical block, it didn't matter to me. This will give you the option to go Sword and Board or Sword and Wand depending on the situation. As you can imagine, your playstyle is very simple. Fight at ranged whenever possible, kill weaker enemies with the falchion, and that's pretty much it. You're welcome to equip heavier gear as you find it, assuming you don't fat roll, but I would recommend keeping the hat circlet as it increases your MP. And with that, you are good to go. So you have two amazing swords, a great farming spot, a ton of levels, a bunch of ridiculous spells, and the best class in the entire game. Where do we go from here? Well, you're probably going to eventually be upgrading your catalyst to the insanity catalyst once you kill a particular boss and use its soul at the smith. Additionally, be sure to save the sorcerer in 3-1, which is the prison, as he will give you several important spells that you will want early. These include Fire Spray, Soul Ray, and Warding, though you're willing to get boss souls for all of these. Aside from that, this kit is well suited to take you through large portions of the game, as you'll be firing dingleberries and fireballs at range, and ain't nothing gonna stop you. Just be sure that if you're fighting enemies strong to magic, like Mind Flayers and those Roly Poly Zombies, you use fire spells instead, so you don't waste mana. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you. This build is absolutely nuts for Demon Souls. I know this probably isn't exactly new news for veterans or anything, but this was my build for my first run through of Demon's Souls and it made the game much, much more fun. So I highly suggest trying it out. If you have any other suggestions for either this build or builds in general or something beginners should do for Demon's Souls, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you so much and have yourself a fantastic day playing Demon's Souls.